Peace in the Land, Part 2, Leviticus chapter 26, verses 1 to 13. And today we are focusing on the first verse, No Idols. Remember we had these thoughts, No Idols, the first thought. Notable devotion in worship, verse 2. Notable obedience to God's law, verse 3. And covenant blessings or covenant promises, fruitfulness of the land, protection from enemies, and the presence of God. Israel was at Mount Sinai when God gave them these words. They have been freed from slavery. Now, as we think about slavery, uh, we think about uh, difficult life. Life where you have no freedom. Life where you cannot choose how to live, but you are in total uh, bondage, as it were, uh, by uh, evil. Uh, if you are in bondage to good, in other words, uh, if you are uh, being taken care of, uh, you know, as we understand, as children by our good parents, we are so thankful, isn't it? But here, Israel has been taken out of slavery. They have been freed from the bondage of sin. And they are so happy now that they are freed. You know, every day, they do not have to wake up uh, and face beatings, uh, scoldings, abuses from their masters. But God is going to bring them to the promised land, a land that will fill with milk and honey. So wonderful, isn't it, for God's people to know that God is going to bring us to heaven. You know, what will you do in heaven? Do you know what will you do in heaven? Well, in heaven, God is going to cause you to reign with Him over the universe. What is to reign? To reign means that He put you over something, over His creation. And you are to reign. In other words, you are to take care of it. How can we learn to take care, to reign? Well, the only way is by the character of God, by the, by the character of Christ, whereby goodness is in us, love is in us, all power is with us, and we learn how and we do this, God says for us, to reign together with Him, the universe. You know how big is the universe? Very big, cannot count. And you know, when we will reign with God in the new heavens and the new earth, where Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem will be the capital, uh, the Lord says that He gave a vision to John of the new Jerusalem, the capital of the new world coming down from heaven and how uh, He will recreate the new heavens and the new earth. And we will reign with God for eternity. This is our uh, heritage, or this is the promise that God gives to us through His Christ. And we are so privileged. And this picture of Israel going to the promised land, it's, it is a picture of that privilege that God is going to give us. You see, when they go into the land, God is going to allot each family and each tribe with their own place, their own land, whereby God will send the rain, God will send the sunshine, God will give fertile uh, soil, so that when it's harvest time, they will have plenty of fruit. And it's said here that, you know, they haven't even finished the old corn. The old corn still have much left. 
And here, there is new corn that is coming. So God takes care of them, that they would be fruitful, and that they would multiply. And God says to them, that indeed you are my people. Verse 12 says, I will walk among you and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Upright means that you can stand upright free, you know, not in chains. And this is what God is doing for His people Israel. They are preparing, God is preparing them to go to the promised land. In other words, God is going to bless them. And, you know, before God go, went in and God said to them that there's one thing you must not do. You must not become ungrateful, not become rebellious for all that God has given you. You see, the human fallen nature is this, is that if you have received good, then, you know, after you have received the good, uh, the nature is to forget the goodness that we have received from God. Right? We have received salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was paid with a great price. Right? God himself had to send his son to die, to bleed, to suffer. And how is it that we, when in our time of prosperity, in the time of our peace, uh, we can so easily forget God? So the first thing that God said to the people of Israel in verse 1 is this, that you, ye shall make you no idols or graven image, neither reel you up a standing image, neither shall you set up an image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. The last of all the apostles of Christ, the Apostle John, before he died, he gave a last epistles. Right? He wrote the book of First John. And in the last verse, and in the last, uh, last, stanz, last uh, chapter and the last verse, he says to the church, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. This is one thing that God said, what do you mean by keeping ourselves from idols? Well, idolatry uh, will cause us to grow cold toward God. Anything in our lives that occupies the place that should be occupied by God alone, anything that holds our life and our devotion, anything that is central, anything that seems to be vital, anything that is essential, anything that I live for, on which I depend, is there something that you love above your God? This was the great uh, test that God said to His people that you must not, you must not f forget. So before uh, 1 John 5.20, is 1 John 5.20, uh, 1 John 5.21 is 1 John 5.20. And John said, And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding and that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and eternal life. God is going to save your soul, 
from the punishment of hell and God is going to save you and give you in eternity the blessing of reigning with Him over the new heavens and the new earth which He will create. And <clears throat> the one thing that God said to His people that they are to do is that they are not to make any idols. And John says, keep yourselves. Uh, he says, keep yourselves. The, the word there means to, the, this refers to the activity of a watchman who guard, who protect, who watch over. We are to guard closely and to preserve the relationship that you have established with Christ. How can you guard closely and preserve the relationship that we have established with Christ? But to take time to know Him better. And how can we know Him better? Well, through the consistent study of His Word and prayer so that we do not forget Him. Is there anything that can take you away from Bible study, from worship, from prayer? Is there anything that will come in the way that's an idol? That is that which causes you to stumble and you will forfeit the blessings that God has for you. You see, Israel's history is such that they have been so wayward. They have, it's so easy in your prosperity, in a prosperity what I mean is that when, when they were in the land, to forget the God who is Blessing their crop, blessing their land, giving the sunshine. And, you know, it is so sad how the people of God can so easily forget Him. The one who gives life to Him the one who sustains life in him. During the reign of the divided kingdom, or during the time of the divided kingdom, there was a king in the southern kingdom by the name of Josiah. When he came into rule, he was surprised when the priest, the scribe, brought to him the book of the law that they found in the house of the Lord. In other words, Israel, the people of God, lost their Bible. <laughs> Lose the word. Then how can they know how to live their lives? How sad, isn't it? And this pandemic, this crisis, is going to cause many to be stumbled because they become estranged from the fellowship of the believers. And by and by, the heart will grow cold. By and by, the heart will grow weary. 
the problems will come. And it's sad, isn't it? If you look at the history of Israel, how the people of God were given so much and God had warned them. God had uh, given so many good words to say to them, don't depart. Do that which is pleasing in the sight of God for your own good. And yet, there were those who would choose. And you see, when we neglect, when we allow idols to come into our lives, we will neglect our devotion in worship. So verse 2 says, Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. If the people of God will not choose to reverence Him in worship when they have the opportunity to do so, then they are being disobedient to God. And here verse 3 tells us how the people of God are to simply learn to walk, the Lord says, in my statutes, in the boundaries whereby, whereby He has set for us. What was the boundary? He says, you shall keep your Sabbath. You shall keep your time with God. And, you know, when we have a constant, consistent uh, life, by drawing close to God in our daily activities, uh, you'll find that uh, there is hope and there is help. But it is so easy when we are not careful to allow our hearts to grow cold, to have some other thing that comes to occupy our heart. And what is it that can take away, take us from our devotion to our God? Well, may I say that sometimes it's not the idols that we make, physical idols, you know, but ourselves. We become an idol to ourselves. How sad it is. So much so that we will choose, we will choose to say no to God, say no to the assembling of the people of God together. How sad it is. How sad it is. And there will be a lot of excuses. Uh, uh, men would start to give excuses. Uh, now our excuse would be that, oh, you have to wear mask. So uncomfortable. Let us realize the privilege that God has given us. And let us understand the privilege that God has accorded to us. And let us understand the battle that is going on for our souls. If we are not, our eyes are not open, if 
we are not staying close to God, we would realize and we would fall into the destructive effects of idolatry. And what are the destructive effects of idolatry? Is that peace will, God's peace will leave us. And we are not stayed upon the Lord. And this was clearly given in the, in the history of Israel. And this John also said to his people, Be careful, be careful. In our text, is given to us all the blessings up to verse 13. But from verse 14 onwards, is all the cursings that would come when we would choose not to walk with God. What are the blessings that God gives to His people? Uh, verse 4 of our text says, Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. Now, the people of Israel experienced this. When they began to have idols in their lives, began to think about themselves rather than putting God first, then they began to stumble. And God sent enemies to thwart them, to take away their peace. The Lord says, verse 6, I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will rid you of the beasts out of the land, and ye shall, and neither shall the sword go through your land. In other words, you will be protected. God Himself will protect you. But if we would choose to hold on to our idols, then you would see uh, that trouble soon will come. Verse 7, And ye shall chase your enemies, and ye shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. In other words, God will cause you to triumph over darkness. There will be victory. But if we would delve with the things of darkness, sin has a very great strangle hold upon our lives. And that is why the first thing that the Lord asked Moses to write is that they shall make no idols nor graven image how important it is that we would keep ourselves pure and that we would guard our life, guard our relationship in Christ. That we should let Christ be central in our devotion. Let Christ be still our first love and that He is the true God, and we have none other. As we think about 
Israel's history as we would think about Israel when they were in Babylon. You see, when God sent the enemies and to, to take them, they had nothing to eat. The enemies surrounded them. Psalm 137 described this scene when they were deported to Babylon. It's found in... Uh, Page four of your notes. Page four of your notes. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, do you remember the temple? Remember the times when they could go to the house of God to worship? Now they couldn't. Everywhere they turn, they see idols around them. We remembered Zion. We hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, for there they that carried us away captive required us of us a song. They that wasted us required us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And what was the response? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now they became slaves, back to becoming slaves again. See, sin has that kind of a way to capture our hearts, draw us, leer us, entice us, then sting us. And this is a song of regret. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. So, you know, they say all these words. Right? Let me not have the use of my hands, the proper use of my mouth, right? What is it that God gave to us? A good vocal cord to praise Him, isn't it? God give us hands in order that we can play the harp to praise Him. If I do not remember thee, my tongue cleaver to the roof of my mouth, if I remember not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it even to the foundation, Right, how the enemy uh, uh, was so uh, charged, angry with them to want to destroy them. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed? Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. You know, when the Babylonians came, how cruel they are. They came and they took the little babies and they smashed them upon the walls. The effect, the impact of idolatry was much grief, regret, sorrow and sadness. So the Lord is saying to us, let us be aware of the danger to idolat of idolatry to our soul's eternal well-being. And there is a final judgment awaiting idolaters that we must take heed. And this is a warning that John gave in Revelation 21, verse 1 to 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, 
and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and will be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water freely, of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that overcometh. The Lord wants us to be an overcomer. And I will be their God and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. How sad it is when the people of God choose to embrace the idols. You see, what happened to Israel? Why is it that this can happen to them? Because they had it too good. They become complacent. And how sad it is. And so, when God gave His word, He was preparing them to go into the land and to enjoy the peace that God would impart to them in the land. And He gave them the words of warning. He tells them where the dangers are. Uh, don't walk this way. Walk that way. Here, there is a big hole. You're going to drop. <laughs> don't walk this way. Take that way. Ah. Ye shall make no idols nor graven image so that you may stand upright so that you may go upright. You may live with God's presence, God's blessing upon you. What a life that God gives us. What blessings that God has imparted to us that we forfeit. <laughs> Why? Why? That's the history of fallen men, you see. Right? We have seen in our study of Genesis why, how it repeats itself over and over again. Right? Before the flood, after the flood. But God did not leave us without hope, without help. He sends His prophets to plead he sends his apostles to reach but the time will come when there is time no more. May the Lord strengthen his people that we may appropriate the peace that he gives us by drawing close to him, by not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. May God be merciful to help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy word. Thank Thee for Thy mercy. Strengthen us by Thy grace. This I pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen.